Okay, today we're going to go over how to wire up a aftermarket radio. Um, right here, I have a plug for an aftermarket radio. This one's specifically a Pioneer. Most are pretty similar to this. There's a couple changes between them, but the majority, if you're trying to figure out how to wire these up or understanding the wiring of these, uh, this is a good video to watch. So, let's start by just isolating and understanding the colors, just isolating all the wires. So, you have some gray wires, a pair of those, a pair of purple wires, a pair of white wires, and a pair of green wires. Um, there should be one solid color and then one with a stripe, as you can see the gray one and the white one, and then there's a the green one with the stripe and there is a purple one in there, but it's hard to see. Um, those are all your speaker wires. So that gets rid of a big lot of the mess because those are just the positive and negative for each of the speakers. The one with the black stripe, so the striped wire being the negative and the solid wire being the positive. The uh, white wires are your front left speaker, so your driver door. The green are going to be your rear left speaker. So rear of the car, still on the driver's side. Then if we go over to gray, that's going to be your passenger side front door, so passenger door. Then purple, that's going to be your rear passenger door, all the way in the back. All right, so that pretty much, most people understand speaker wires, pretty straightforward. Okay, now we get into a little bit more of the tricky stuff. Uh, this yellow and black wire, this is specific for Pioneer radios. On other radios, such as JVC, Kenwood, I think Alpine also uses uh, brown as the color for their mute wire. So let's say you have a car that has a mute button somewhere in it, possibly on the steering wheel. Then you could use this to designate to the wire in the vehicle already with it. Most likely, you won't use this wire. So normally, you'll just cap it off and it just happens to be in the back. But if you do have the option to add in a mute button that's on the dash or on the steering wheel and it's an easy setup without data control then you can wire this up. Next we have the orange and white wire. This is your illumination wire. This coincides with your dash lights when they get brighter and when they get uh, dimmer. So let's say you turn on your headlights and then you get your dash dims a little bit or brightens up, this gives a 12 volt signal to the radio that it should dim the lights or change in some other effect. Um, most likely you won't use this wire or if you're like me who likes the radio the same brightness all the time then you won't even use it. So there's two wires that you actually don't even need to use but you can use them if you need to. Then you have the blue and white wire. This is your 12 volt accessory. This could power a power antenna or an amp. It's made mostly to work with an amp because it'll be 12 volt all the time. If you have two of these wires, one solid blue and one blue with a stripe, the solid blue is made for the antenna, meaning that when you turn on the tuner on it, so let's say you have USB, auxiliary, AM, FM tuner, and CB, It'll only get 12 volts when you have it set on the AM FM tuner. And then on the rest of the settings, you won't have 12 volts, so allow the power antenna to go back down. However, if you just want to use it when you turn the vehicle on, so it'd be less use of the antenna, then you could just use the normal 12 volt off of this. Also, this is, like I said earlier, good for powering amps. So the amp turn on, that's your wire. 12 volts when the radio is on. And this is a little different than running from a direct accessory because you can run an amp directly off the ignition. That way it doesn't, the amp turn on wire anyway. However, you will hear a popping because the radio and the amp turn on at the exact same time. If this is a slight delay from the ignition, and that's why you don't hear the pop. Okay, now on to the main power harness. So you have the black, yellow, and red. Pretty much in every case, the black wire is going to be your ground. So 12 volt ground, you can ground it to the back of the dash if it's metal, 
or to the wiring harness that's already there. Yellow is going to be, in most cases, your 12 volt constant. So 12 volts all the time, anytime. That saves all your AM FM stations, any settings in the radio, the clock, any of that's going to be controlled by this. And then you have the red wire, which is ignition controlled. So it only works when the car is in the on position or in the accessory position by the key. So when you get into the vehicle, this should not read 12 volts, only when you have the key in the ignition and it's all the way turned to on or accessory. It won't work in the start position. Um, so that's the basic overview of everything. Um, if you're trying to wire up, let's say, like a radio like in a cooler or you're just trying to wire up a radio somewhere that besides the vehicle it has a key to turn on, you can have the accessory wired up with the constant directly to the battery. That will leave it always on and you just turn it on and off by the radio. It will have a little bit more draw. So normally what you do is just put a switch in line of the accessory to the 12 volt constant and that will normally save you a little bit of battery. But all in all that's pretty much most of it for a single gen radio. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them and I can access more. I'm going to make the next video on how to find these wires. Let's say if you don't have a wiring harness and you need to figure out what they are inside the car and what wires to hook them up to, I'm going to show you guys how to test for those. That way you can match up all the wires and get wired up without spending a whole lot of money on extra parts besides the radio itself. Alright, enjoy. Have a good one.